Today we're going to talk about our thoughts on the Good Food and Wine Show from Sydney and sample a few wines from there. Welcome to the Pod Wind Up Podcast. I'm Jason. And I'm Trent. And we're here to bring you an unfiltered, unapologetically unprofessional wine journey. Um, I guess first things first, um, we have our, our slogan. Our slogan, which is drink more, try, try more, more, learn, learn more. more. So and, Jason, what have you been drinking? And we jump to wine of the week. Yes. <laughs> So, so this, this week I want to talk about a Chardonnay that I've had from Margaret River. It's a classic Chardonnay. It's a Lewin Estate 2021 Chardonnay. Very crisp, uh, beautiful lemony citrus and oaky scent. Uh, a very subtle buttery flavor uh, mm. for a Chardonnay, which is fantastic. I loved it. It was, it was uh, again, over a trip that we had at, at at the snows. How much was it? I find the one's always quite expensive though, right? It, it was $40 from the cellar door. And I have to say, it was my brother-in-law who, who brought it over. Yeah. Uh, but but from Margaret River, $40 for, for that, that right. shardy. It was a fantastic shardy. So highly recommend that uh, if you're into your Chardonnays. Always. Always. Always, yeah? always. And, and some Chardonnays is something that we might be trying, we will be trying today. <laughs> and, and today, what we wanted to do is share our thoughts on the good food and wine show, which, which you and I 2023, are. right? 2023, <laughs> which ha we had the experience to go through. And it's good you said that because honestly, I haven't been to the good food and wine show for quite some time. COVID, family, et cetera, all of those things impacted yeah. it. And I think, I think it was your first visit to the good food it, and wine it show. It was right? my first visit. I, was, I know that you've been a, a few times before. Before me, I was a bit of a good food and wine show virgin. So... <laughs> Yeah. So you popped the cherry I in popped, this instance. I, I popped the cherry. Um, you know, it was, I think it was it was memorable, but I wouldn't say it was climactic. In my sense. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, you sometimes you shock me on this show with these words. I agree, climactic is not how I would describe it, but good uh, and, and enjoyable. And and so what we wanted to do today is share our thoughts and our experiences there. First thing I wanted to say is it's great that we had an opportunity to visit. I hadn't been there for a while. Probably my thoughts when I was visiting previously was more around getting the freebie snacks, the, mm -hmm. the peanut brittle or, or some chips. Yeah. Now it's focused on the wine. And, and I, thought, I thought that there was a great representation of the different wineries and regions that were there that we could sample. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like you had some initial thoughts. Here. Yeah, I think my initial thoughts was actually I didn't think it was a great representation though. Oh, not good you know, enough. I, I okay. felt I forget. I think um, it definitely had Clare Valley, Barossa, mm. Margaret River, but mm. then it was missing uh, Yarra, Tasmania, um, maybe Queensland or other areas as well. So I felt that it was good for what it had, but I felt that it could have done more as well in terms of encapsulating. The different wine regions around australia yeah you're right you actually uh, i forget the, the big thing that was missing was the victorian correct wines. yeah and that was bizarre because i was looking forward to, yeah. to trying quite a few yeah. of those and, and and so okay so so there's some pros and cons still you get to try a variety yeah. you don't need to go interstate yeah you could go to one location pay some money and try a bit of yeah. a sample. There could be a bit more diversity, I guess. I, I think the key word that kind of comes to my head is about convenience. Like, I wouldn't mm. say that it was enjoyable in a sense because for me, it felt like it was a bit chaotic. Um, you know, lining up, especially for the ones that you wanted to try. Because uh, the ones that you want to try is basically where everyone else wanted to try as well. So you had to queue up. Then when you're actually drinking the wine, you felt like you're kind of under pressure to then try the wines and then move into the yeah. next one because you have like, 30 other people behind you waiting to, to try the next the next wine so right. i felt that it was good uh, i think um the people then terms of representing the wines were very accommodating and they took the time to actually talk to us as well um in most part but uh you know throughout all the chaos but i feel that you know it's convenience which is going to be the key thing that kind of i got out of it rather than the enjoyment it still doesn't be going out to cellar doors meeting the people, laying back, having a couple of wines, doing a proper tasting without all that pressure, chaos around you. Yes, and and part of the chaos was probably related to the fact that we had our family with us, a wife and kids yeah. in tow waiting for the fathers to, to yeah. taste some <laughs> wine. And so there were a few tips I had for anyone that's looking to visit the Good Food and Wine Show in, in future years. One, if possible, leave the kids at home. 
they 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 don't exactly enjoy the wine. They did get to fly, uh, try a bit of food, which yeah. is good. But if you're there to take away that pressure, yeah, probably probably try to leave the kids at home. Other other tips that I had were uh, try the toasty. There was oh, a toasty was fantastic toasty. It had it had like Gruyere cheese. I'm assuming some yeah. some great tangy cheese, some some pork, yeah. uh, pulled pork, a bit of bit of pickles. We we were able to eat it while we were with Kiri Hill. Yeah. And trying a few of their Rieslings and the, the, the pairing was amazing. So try, try that. Uh, and, and the other thing is venture out and have a chat. There were so many different stories that yeah. we learned. In having a chat to, to the people that were running the wineries or running the stores themselves. Yeah. So, so highly recommend that. And I had, I had a few other takeaways, but were there other, any other tips that you had? If you're visiting the Good Food and Wine Show, tips for people that would visit there? Um, again, I think, you know, with the family, it's hard because you're very much time pressured. But you know, you try and pick which ones you want to try, and then kind of know what you want to try, and then um, I think just go for it. I think it does give you a bit of a, a quick kind of insight in terms of, in terms of the different areas and different regions. But um, yeah, it's just the chaos that really kind of got to me. Um, chaos that... is a big word. You came out stressed. That was you and I had different experiences, which is <laughs> which is interesting. But but it shows the individuality individuality and how people yeah. respond. Look. Uh, I think the two takeaways that I would share from the Good Food and Wine Show was that there is there's a fair bit of chaos and a, a fair bit of cues, but you have an opportunity to try wineries that are not necessarily mm. as marketed as the big major brands yeah. like a Penfolds or something mm. like that. There were there were wineries we visited. It was it was a husband and wife winery. Yeah, they 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 were just trying to make it within the industry, which is really inspiring. Uh, but but the, the thing that stood out for me was that I went to Margaret yeah. River at the start of the year, tried tried four to five different wineries, never came or across the wineries and, and the wines that we're going to try yeah. today from Umamu Estate and, yeah. and Clairol. And and without going to the Good Food and yeah. Wine Show, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to know about them yeah. or taste them. So uh, it, it's a great benefit to be able to try these different yeah. wineries. Yeah, you mentioned that about, about like no big names there, which then kind of like triggered me saying, yeah, that's really true. Because I think maybe the big names feel like I don't need to be in this show and therefore gives opportunity for like maybe the smaller wine makers to kind of then start to show their wares yes. in the show, which I think was good. It's a good opportunity. Yeah. Like I said, the, the father and uh, the, the husband and wife yeah. team really stood out. Like they were just giving it a crack, which, which is great. Mm. I think the other takeaway I had from there is coming from a, a corporate world, a uh, large number of people in an organization, very specialized people. I realized that the wine industry, you actually have to be multi-skilled. Mm. We went to a, a lot of the stalls and Kiri Hill, uh, we, met, uh, we met Alexandria and, and Catherine, uh, the winemaker and, and, and the brand manager respectively. Yeah. And they were there at the stalls meeting the people. But in my mind, they're quite senior roles within yeah. the organization. Yeah. But they're there serving out the wine, trying to sell the wine, etc. Promoting the wine. Yeah. Promoting the wine. And, and coming from a corporate organization, it's not something that I'm used to. Yeah. Similarly with Umamu Estate, um, we had Charmaine. She's the chief executive. Again, yeah. she's there at the stalls meeting yeah. the people, uh, promoting and, and very passionate about her wine. So it made me realize how small uh, the mm. organizations are within a wine industry and, and how diverse in skill set you need to be. Yeah, I've never been in the wine industry, but I feel that there's a lot of romance in terms of being in the wine industry. But I think what we've seen is that you have to be very passionate about the wine yes. to actually be in it. And we've seen that passion have come through and then the people that we speak to. Yes, absolutely. Around yes. the wineries. And that kind of like what interests me, we kind of talked about before about what kind of inspires you. You said a remark for me is about the winemakers, the people and that passion around the wines. Oh, hearing their stories stories is great, yeah. and, and and they're clearly passionate because they had a lot of interesting facts yeah. around it, and and quite friendly. Mm. Is there any other takeaways that you wanted to share, or, or no. should we jump into the wines? I think the only other takeaways, like if I was going to give a rating out of out of ten, you know, I'll say it's a seven out, seven out of ten for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I would probably go to it again, but. This time I kind of go in knowing what I'm, I'm expecting. Yes. Now that you've popped the cherry, you know what to do. You know the different moves to make. I'm experienced now. You're experienced, no longer a version. Exactly. Fantastic. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, what we want to do today is, is share with you 
a few of the wines that we bought from the Good Food and Wine Show. And like I said, I went to Margaret River in January. I hadn't heard of these wineries, but this was probably the second and third stalls that we visited at the mm. show, and they were very impressive. And so we're going to present to you a Chardonnay from Margaret River. Yeah. And from the same region in Margaret River, uh, a Clarol uh, Cab Sav. Yeah. Okay. And, and so that's the plant. Yes. Sounds good. We're going to start with the whites first. So Umamu mm. Estate. So I've never been to Margaret River before. So it's a very eye-opening experience for me. I know that you've been there, but I still haven't made that trip out to the West. So for the Umamu Estate, it's a 2018 um, Umamu Estate Chardonnay. How much was it again, Jason? Do you remember this one? This was about $60 from the Good Food and Wine Show. $60. Um, so yeah, the person that we met there was Charmaine. Um, I think Charmaine's actually daughter of the founders, which is her parents, right, um, of the estate. They established that in 1997. So they started to grow a few wines there, um, Cab Sav, Chardonnay, um, uh, et cetera, around that, around that area. And they started then produced the first vintage in 2005. So um, I think from there, they've kind of gone, gone in strides and leaps. They won numerous awards and have also been um, uh, used in Qantas first class business class as well in terms of serving there. And I think we were quite, well, one was we liked the kind of Asian pride around the, uh, that Charmaine's Malaysian. Also, secondly, Very the Very interesting to see an Asian within the in Australian wine. wine industry. Yeah, absolutely. And then right. secondly, the wines were pretty damn good as well, hence why we purchased a few. And just kind of retaste that t today again, kind of uh, resonated back in terms of why we kind of like the wines as well. Uh, the thing that stood stood out when, when speaking to, to Charmaine and the whole reason why I actually liked Margaret River wineries is because of Xanadu, Xanadu wines. Yeah. And... It, w it was interesting to speak to Charmaine because she told us that the winemaker is actually Goodall, who is the chief winemaker at Xanadu Wines. Yeah. And, and so this affinity and enjoyment of the wine, it yeah. kind of links back to that. So it was just a, a great coincidence and, and, and keen to try these yeah. and rate these for, for everyone here. Yeah, so again, um, for Umamu Estate, the name comes from the fifth sense, you know, Umami. Um, oh, right. Umami. Is that why? And okay. Umami is kind of... Um, means taste of deliciousness and contentment. And I think maybe we could kind of taste that deliciousness and contentment in the wines being produced. Today. I remember having contentment, which is contentment. why we bought it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And, and so what we'll do here is, uh, as we do in the Wine Up podcast, we'll taste with our eyes, our nose and our mouth. And we'll start off with the eyes here uh, as, we, as we take it to the white napkin and, and, and just share our thoughts here. Uh, yeah, so light pale, yellowy green for me. Um, it gives that view of butter. Uh, I, I think of shardy and some of them are not always uh, on the buttery side, but this gives a bit of a, a view of, of a light butter on our side. And, then, and now to the nose. For me, definitely smell that kind of um, oak treatment coming through. Um, maybe a bit more prevalent than when I first had it at the Good Food and Wine show. Maybe yes. then I had a few more drinks under my belt. It, it was the second stall, was which was it? interesting because I, I agree. The thing that really stood out at the time when we went to the stall was the oak was less prevalent. It was yeah. more subtle. Yeah. But having it now, and I, I don't know, do we need to open it up or what? But the oak is, is quite clearly there. Yeah. Maybe not as strong as, as elsewhere. Yeah. Uh, but you. The, uh, the other thing in terms of like Umamu State, the winery as well, is that. Um, you, you mentioned that it uses Xanadu as a winemaker, it kind of um, talks to the point about these are kind of smaller wineries as well. You know, there is no cellar door at Umamu and they kind of just sell from like the website or by kind of word of mouth or online, et cetera. Yes. So again, a bit more boutique. They definitely have that love and passion in terms of how they create the wines and in terms of you know, how they produce the wines, they're very much biodynamic in, in, in how they kind of create their wines. So I mean, that's very much honoring the environment. They let the bees, animals kind of roam around and create that kind of ecosystem to then to help develop the wines as well. Yeah, you, you could definitely tell from, from the way that Charmaine was talking and if you read about their history, it's just a family that loves wine. Yeah, they, yeah. they really enjoy it. So, so that... Uh, the boutique nature absolutely comes through. I think the other thing that comes through, uh, which you might have mentioned at the time, was this scent of toast. Yeah. This is... it, has a, it has a good whack of acid still coming through. It keeps it kind of refreshing. 
that kind of goes from the middle into the sides of the mouth. Um, as I mentioned, off the off the nose, it had kind of a hint of oak, uh, vanilla, a bit of that kind of butteriness also coming through as well. Maybe a bit too strong, I think, that in, in this sense. Um, maybe it has to open up, maybe it has to age a bit more to kind of help mellow down. Um, but it def definitely has kind of good length on it as well. It just keeps on lingering in the back of your mouth through the nasal passages coming through which I think is really good. I'm making multiple facial expressions, which in this instance is a good thing because yeah. uh, I, can, I can feel it in the mouth. I can taste it. Uh, oak, oak is there, medium body wine, uh, the toastiness. I'm imagining a, a, a white slice of bread being toasted up is coming through. A cre Creamy is, is, like, is what I feel. It's like creamy toast, yeah. I think the kind of word that kind of popped in my head before is that kind of like shortbready type of thing. Like, um, shortbread, yeah. That kind of a bit of buttery kind of pastry kind of flavor to it kind of coming through which is um it's very different to kind of other chardonnays as well you know but this one is very much i guess umami's kind of signature in terms of what they're trying to create um Absolutely. kind of fruity but a bit more kind of the kind of oak butteriness a bit more about the winemaker coming through less about maybe the fruit but it comes together quite well and definitely I love that kind of length that kind of just keeps them permeating going through and through and through. All, all this time since you've been talking that I can still feel, I can still taste it, which is fantastic. Mm. All right. Are we at the point where we think we could give this a rating? Ooh, okay. Um, for me, rating out of 10 is probably 7 out of 10. Yeah. Um, having tasted a few more Chardonnays, I think this is good, but, you know, again, it's up to persons. Yes. Um, likings and preferences you know for this one i feel maybe on second try maybe it's a bit too much of the kind of oak influence again maybe with time it'll mellow down and then i'll like it a bit more but i feel at this time maybe it's a bit bit too much yeah and, and it always comes down to individual preference it is different to what i experienced at the time at the good food and yeah. wine show but but to be honest i'm really enjoying the oakiness that's coming through uh that that toasty creamy flavor i actually give this an eight out of ten and and it's always up to the individual but in terms of level of happiness mouthfeel mm. uh enjoying and just thinking about the wine i quite like it so so eight out of ten corkscrews mm. for me yeah i think yeah. we spoke about before it's like the wines that we love is the wines that make you smile yes you know, like, yeah. and this is giving me a smile i completely <laughs> agree Okay, onto the red. You want to introduce the red. Right. And so we'll open up the Clarolt. Clarolt or Claro? Claro. 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 Sounds a bit of French influence. And this is a 2019 Cab Sav. Also, also from Margaret River. And we had a fantastic opportunity to chat with Luke and Maddie from, from the Clarolt. Yeah. Strikeland stall and they Stryker. had a striker so Stryker. they had a they had a great range and yeah. we actually bought multiple we didn't we didn't just buy cab sale yeah, i think yeah. we bought a, a shiraz and a shardy yeah and i think we were going Reese. to buy a, a rosé uh, uh -huh. i remember a rosé or something like that so rosé is pretty special as i remember yeah really really fantastic place uh the winery was taken over by uh someone from the US which was forming that Strikeland kind of Stryker. brand Striker sorry yeah. i keep saying Strikeland yeah. that that brand there uh but the wines really stood out and, and talking to to Luke great history about his own wine journey coming yeah. from New Zealand uh and, and being and tasting Margaret River wines mm. and wanting to work here and, and and that's what enticed him over so we have the Cab Sav and I might lift the cab sav to the screen uh, so you can get a view on what the colors are. Trent, mm. did you want to describe? Yeah, definitely kind of dark, kind of ruby red. I guess very classic kind of Cabernet uh, coming through. Yeah, dark mm. red, deep colors. Mm. And, and if we go to the scent. Definitely um, mm. the darker fruits coming yes. through this one. I think um, it's, it's that kind of black black currant kind of uh, ribenery type of kind of flavors coming through. Very, uh, I don't know, is it less fresh fruit, more kind of stewed fruit? Bit, cooked fruit. A bit of cooked fruit in cooked there. Cooked fruit. Yeah. Which gives that kind of more kind of a, a jammy type of flavor as well that come, comes through. A bit of that kind of herbaceousness with the kind of, you mentioned kind of green capsicum. Mm. Capsicum. Yeah, it comes through. 
that's how you pronounce it. That's right. Look, I, I, uh, yeah. I, I agree with all of that. To me, like anytime I'm tasting a cab sav, to me these these are kind of classic classic scents that are coming through. That capsicum, uh, dark fruits. Yeah. I agree. It's it's slightly stewed. There's a tiny bit, tiny bit of a, a chocolate scent to it, but but I'm keen to give this a try. So let's try with the mouth. I already tried with it. Um, I think the tannins are really quite well integrated. Well, I mean that it's not too abrasive and kind of going like hits you. Mm. Kind of like it's there, but then it's it's quite mellow and integrated into the wine. It doesn't stick out. Is that the balance that's coming? It's through? the balance coming out. Um, again, those black fruits really come through again, definitely on the palate. Um, mm. But it still has that kind of acidity to kind of give the kind of fruits a kind of that lift in the wine. Yeah, yeah, I I, comp- I agree with all of those. Uh, medium body wine, medium tannins. I actually the the dark chocolate kind of flavor really comes through, mixed with the cherry, which, which is quite enjoyable. Yeah. I think in terms of the finish, I'm just gonna have a bit more. But do you, do you have quite I a th- finish. In I it? think the only thing for me is that maybe the only kind of negative. I think when on on the nose, I can smell a bit of that kind of the alcohol going through that. Um, Something a bit harsh. Yeah, it? a bit harsh Slight, about it. Very slight. Yep. But again, I don't know whether 2019 Cabernets you tend to can age for a bit longer. Again, maybe a bit more years. I know it's built kind of then mellowed down a bit more, a bit more approachable. But even now, it's I wouldn't say it's bad drinking. It's still quite good drinking. Yes. Um, I, I feel like it's a classic Cab Sav. Enjoyable. Probably needs a bit more time. A bit more time. But how would you also... Differentiate this from like a Kunawara Cab Sav, mm. the Margaret River Cab Sav. There's something about the the Kunawara Cab Savs about the soil that really comes through. The like you can really taste that within within it. I'm trying to think of a descriptor for that, but well, what's your thoughts? I think it is a bit more lifted compared to the um, Kunawaras. The Kunawara is maybe a bit more bigger, bolder. It still has a kind of more clay, kind of stronger type of flavors coming through it. This one, I think, it still has that, but um slightly lighter but again i think with a bit more time it's definitely going to come together and be quite yeah quite good yeah but, i think the kunawara it's the clay that that i yeah. can i can taste how much it. is this one again is that right? uh this was about 35 dollars well, i think that's good value for which, 35 which is good value for for this kind of wine mm. and, and so factoring that all in mind corkscrews what's your thoughts what would you give i'll probably give this seven out of ten based on where it is at the moment with the current age um, like to open up a, a bit later correct yeah good thing you've got a few bottles of that yeah i agree i agree i i, I it's enjoyable seven out of ten if uh between the two right now i'm really enjoying the chardonnay uh but but this is a great wine great to meet luke and maddie uh from the team out yeah. there yeah and so uh, were you gonna add something no i was gonna say it? just last thoughts like i think with the cabernet definitely i feel like i need food with it Yes, it's it's quite a strong, it's a bold yeah. item. You need something to mellow, balance Correct, yeah. it out. Yeah, I completely agree. <laughs> Sounds like we're going to get some food after this. Okay. <laughs> and so that's the wine up for today. We hope you've given you a bit of insight into the Good Food and Wine Show. Both of us recommend going there. Uh, some few tips uh, from, from there and some great wines that we've tried from Margaret River. And so as we say here at the Wind Up, Drink more, try try more, more, learn more, more. and don't forget to like, download, and subscribe. Thanks all. Cheers, mate.